Hi everyone, today I have not got just one technique for you but I am combining two different techniques. Now both of these techniques I have shown you on my channel before but I'm going to bring them together to give you a beautiful background that you can achieve. So the items that I'm going to be using today is a stamp set and I'm going to be using my new textures Spring Awakening uh, foliage wreath because we have got these beautiful half tone individual leaves and I'm actually just going to be using one stamp. Um, I'll link this down below for you. Uh, a little bit of cardstock um, in a light colour, so more towards the lights than the, than the darks. I've got embossing ink, uh, obviously my stamping platform, but I prefer to use an acrylic block than an actual platform um, so that I can just move about much, much easier, do lots of stamping at once. A little bit of water. Um, this, These are silicone hands for holding when I'm heat embossing. Um, I will add the link to these if they're still available i know they sold out really quickly last time i used them so if i can i'll add the link if there's no link it's because i can't find where to purchase them anymore but i'll do my best anti-static bag uh, an ink blending brush a darker version of your cardstock so in a water reactive ink it can be a distress ink it can be a distress oxide but essentially you want to go for a darker color to whatever your cardstock is and clear embossing powder you don't need a tub as large as this but i go through a lot of it okay so let's get on with the tutorial the two techniques that i'm going to be combining you can find these in individual videos and i will link those down below for you as well so these are going to be the uh, layered heat embossing and the faux vellum look it creates such a beautiful background so we're going to start first of all on our plain cardstock with some clear embossing ink and I'm just going to stamp these leaves all the way around the edge. Now I'm not being precise about the um, position of these, I'm just going to keep moving the stamp in different directions a little bit, rotating it as I stamp it. Um, I'd like this to look quite organic in the end and I'm also going to be overlaying some stamps as well so I'm really not too fussy about this being perfect obviously because I am stamping in clear ink it's much harder for you to actually see what I'm doing at this stage but as soon as I add that clear embossing powder you're going to be able to see what I've done there so I've kind of gone around there as evenly as I can now I'm going to take another scrap of green cardstock this is just an off cut from the panel I'm going to use it to catch my clear embossing powder just sprinkle that all over and this way I can really easily tip this back into the pot so there you'll see exactly where I've stamped that leaf now let's clean this away and then heat set those leaves now I absolutely love heat embossing. It was the first uh, technique that actually drew me to card making. I just thought it was magic and I still do every time. I love exploring things like this, layering heat embossing, um, mixing powders as well to create your own colors. There's lots of things you can do with embossing powders. Um, add inks into your powders, do things with the powders while they're wet. I've done that on my channel before. There's actually a really fun technique video that I put up only really a few weeks ago where I put cotton wool into um, the powder while it was damp, while it was still wet and melted. And we had some fun playing with that afterwards, all the texture. So, I mean, there's another video. I will try to put that up at the top here for you so you can find that one if you're interested too. But yeah, heat embossing in general is just beautiful. So there you'll see where my clear embossed leaves are. Now I'm going to come onto a clear blending mat just to protect my surface. And I'm going to blend my darker colour. And you do really ideally want to go really quite dark with this. So uh, I'm using Forest Moss in the Distress Oxide range. And yes, you can use Distress Ink. You do need your ink though to be water reactive. That is uh, kind of an essential for this one to work. So um, mind you, if you don't have water reactive ink, you would just miss out the last stage. And what I'll do is I'll, tr I'll remember to show you before we get to the last stage, what effect you will be left with. It's not too dissimilar, but definitely using the water reactive properties at the end does make a difference. So as you can see by now blending that darker green ink in, what I'm actually doing is just lifting out those leaves even further because the clear emboss is resisting the ink. I'm just using a bit of tissue here. It's actually a damp tissue so I probably shouldn't be using it but 
a little bit of tissue here just to hold my cardstock still so I don't get really mucky fingers and try to drag as much off the blending mat as possible. There we go. Okay, so I have got some ink over the leaves. That's fine. That won't really dry on there. I'm going to set this aside to dry. Now you can heat dry this if you like with a heat tool. Just be aware that your embossing powder will likely remelt. Shouldn't cause too much of an issue. It can sometimes blur your image a little bit if those particles melt and kind of spread out a little bit more, but um, not too much of an issue. I would definitely say if you're going to warm this up to speed up the ink drying, do it from underneath and keep it flat so that the um, a melted heat embossing doesn't run anywhere too far. Once you think your panel is dry, completely dry, you see I've got a couple of fingerprints in there, but that doesn't matter and you'll see why in a little while. The best thing to do now is to test that it is fully dry before you do the next stage. And I'm going to do that by, first of all, putting an anti-static bag down on my cardstock. I should have done this at the beginning as well, but I completely forgot. But never mind, definitely at this stage you need to do this. And then I'm going to come on to uh, my scrap paper and I'm going to just pop over some clear embossing powder, tap that off and give it a good tap and make sure that the powder comes off. Now I can see I've still got a few areas where that's not yet coming off. So although it felt dry to me, it's not fully dry. What you want is for that powder not to be sticking at all. So I'm going to give this another five, 10 minutes to dry itself off. Okay, so after giving that a little more time and testing again in the same way by sprinkling some clear powder over, that powder all tipped off nicely so I know this is now dry. So I can go ahead and I'm going to re-stamp my leaves with my clear embossing ink. Now I'm going to do this quite randomly over the uh, leaves that are already there but also in some of the gaps. This, the more you can overlap, the better the results, the most beautiful results you're going to get. So you don't have to, of course, stamp the full image each time either. So I'd like to try and just see, I've got one there and one there. So I need to try and get a slightly different angle on this so it doesn't look too much like a repeated image. And just tuck one in there and then one at the top. Let's do that over the greens. Like I say, where you overlap is where you're going to get the most beautiful image. Now I'm going to tip that up at an angle just so I can see. I haven't put anything here yet. So that can go like that. There we go. So I think, again, I've got quite an even border of leaves. Not so even, it doesn't look organic though. Now back to my scrap of cardstock and pop your clear powder all over these. Tapping off the excess afterwards. There we go. So then make sure there's no powder anywhere else. We should have your leaves uh, in the clear powder and we're going to clean up and heat set these as well. Now, once these leaves are heat set, this is essentially the effect that you will get if you do the layered heat embossing that I was talking about, because the clear powder will darken the look of the leaves that you're now embossing, the second layer. Um, and you don't need to do much else. That is one of your techniques. Now you could also go in and blend another color, an even darker color over the top of these to really pick those dark green leaves out. But essentially, as you can see, just with the heat embossing, that is a really beautiful look. Now I'm going to lift this even further with the next stage. And this actually comes inspired by the faux vellum look. The faux vellum look is where you use distress oxides or distress inks, spritz with water once you've blended them, and you get this really beautiful vellum look. Now with the inks, it's because you're lifting the colour. With the oxides, usually what's happening is it's actually having a reaction, the water's having a reaction with the pigment element of the oxides on the paper, giving it a cloudy look. Either way, whether you use oxides or inks, you're going to get a really lovely look. Now watch this, as soon as I spray this with water, you'll see the background colour instantly change, light and go cloudy. Can you see that happening? 
Isn't that just beautiful? I love that. I'm not going to do anything with that. Now, if this was an ink, I would then be using my kitchen towel and I would be lifting off the excess. But I really, really love that effect. And I think you will too when you try it with all the different colours that are available in the ink and oxide range. So from mixing two techniques that I've already shown you on my channel, we have got another technique to create the most beautiful layered coloured backgrounds. So we started off with a cardstock that looked a little bit like this colour and we've ended up with stunning layering and colours like this. So I hope you enjoyed these techniques mixed together. If you have, I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel and I will link those videos down below, but this is one of them just here for you. Take care, everybody. I'll see you again very soon.